Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we've got a bit of a theme going on. It's in the browser day. Earlier today, we looked at uh, Photoshop in the browser, well, a Photoshop clone in the browser, uh, PhotoP. But now what we're looking at is Visual Studio Code in the browser. But this isn't a clone. This is a port. This is actual Visual Studio Code running on a server. So what are we looking at in terms of difference? Well, this is Visual Studio Code. This is Visual Studio Code. Code, code. Can you tell me which one is the application and which one is the browser? Well, basically not really. This is pretty much the exact same thing. And there's a good reason behind this. Now, if you've never heard of it, Visual Studio Code is an open source uh, code editor from Microsoft. It is actually my weapon of choice. It is what I use for doing most coding. And I think actually you can say that for most developers these days. I think Visual Studio Code right now is the most popular code editor out there. And increasingly due to all the plugins and sports behind it, it's just becoming a full-blown IDE for most developers out there. And good reason. It's available. It's cross-platform. It's pretty quick. Um, and like I said, it's completely free and open source with a big company like Microsoft behind it. And this is a port of Visual Studio Code to run in the server. Now, why would you want to do this? <sighs> you know what? I'm not 100% certain, to be honest. We'll get to that in a minute. But the fact that you can do this is in itself interesting enough that I am doing this video. So who is doing this magic work? Well, that is the work of coder.com. Now, this isn't just a service of someone running Visual Studio in the browser. This is actually someone porting from Electron hosted, which is what Visual Studio Code itself is, to server hosted. And this is being provided by uh, coder.com. Now, this is actually available and they're pitching it towards the enterprise. So this is sort of uh, the sales pitch of why you would use browser hosted uh, Visual Studio Code as opposed to normal code. And you see computational acceleration, you can dynamically scalable resources based on usage, pre-configured environments, get started faster and say goodbye to it worked on my machine. Seamless teamwork, real-time collaboration turns a development uh, environment into a collaborative space where your engineers can work together. Usage reports and audits view and track every time your team views, creates, updates, pushes, pulls, and deletes company code with accurate, consistent timestamps. Alerts to keep track of uh, when specific actions are taken in coder and role-based permissions. So a lot of this basically seems to stem from the fact that you can deploy your development tools in a cloud, uh, have them all accessed in the same way, lock down your security that way. There's no deployment. So the typical arguments of running things in the cloud. Um, the other big thing I could see this used for is maybe being integrated by someone like uh, Play Canvas who provide a full-blown um, game IDE environment in the cloud and their own editor included. But none of those editors that are included are ever quite as good as Visual Studio Code. So this is a server-side uh, implementation. Now, part that makes this actually really kind of cool, though, is even though you can go to coder.com and sign up and log in and freely use it, which, by the way, you have to confirm using a phone number via SMS, which is a little irritating, but they've got a way of getting around that if you don't want to do that. But it is a free sign-up, and I did it using my GitHub account. Uh, I don't mind them sending me an SMS. But again, if you don't want the SMS sent to you during the sign up, there is a click there. You can email and forgo that. But it's a way of preventing you from abusing it and making a whole bunch of accounts is the idea, at least from their end. But what you can also do is just run it yourself. So this entire thing, this entire project is an MIT licensed open source project. So if you want to host your own server versions of Visual Studio Code, so instead of running it locally, you can run it, you know, one space on your network and have everyone use the same basic install. Well, this is an MIT licensed open source project. Um, it was just pushed up a few days ago. Um, it's called Code Server and Code Server is Visual Studio code running on a remote server accessible through the browser. I tested it with um, Chrome and Firefox, by the way, works uh, well with both of them as long as their server was working fine. I did have some issues running on, uh, uh, what the heck did they call it again, coder.com, uh, where the, I was getting timeouts and gateway errors and that kind of stuff, but that seemed to be a server side issue more than anything. So this is if you want to host it yourself. You can go ahead if you are on Linux or OS X. This is not a good day for, well, good week for Windows, is it? We've had a binary that wasn't available. We've had all the Unity breaches for Windows only. And this one is only available right now in binary form for Linux and OS X. So it's like opposites week, I guess. Um, and then once you've downloaded the binary, you can start it by writing code server and then the directory to open in. And then you can access it 
using that path right there as the default. And then you'd have to set it up for, you know, dealing with other servers and, you know, making it publicly available and so on. And they have a quick hosting guide to get set up and running. They also have guides for hosting it on Google Cloud, AWS, and DigitalOcean. I guess that's another useful bit thing you could do here too, is you could set up a remote development server on any of those hosting services such as Cloud or AWS, and then have like, again, a collaborative effort where everyone logs in. So you don't have to run your code on their server. So you can create and host your own server in which you are running your own development environment. Now there are some issues, and this is one I ran into immediately. The debugging extensions do not work, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, future, we're gonna have the Windows binary support. So this guy, you're gonna be able to download directly instead of having to run it on their code on their server for now. Um, Electron and Chrome OS applications to bridge the gap between local and remote and run Visual Studio unit tests against our build to ensure that features work as expected. So once again, I am not 100% certain why you would use this, but I look at it and go, okay, that's pretty cool. I'm going to share this. I'm going to play with this. I don't know that I'll ever use this again, but if you guys have some use cases here where this could be useful to you, especially in the world of game development, I would love to hear it. Um, I guess you could also have it as a front end coding interface for remotely coding your own server software. Yeah, I, I'm stretching a bit here, but I'd be interested to hear to see from you guys. Do you see a use here for running it in the cloud? Because um, I would love to have more to cite. Now, again, some of the examples they gave for enterprise make a lot of sense. If you want to lock down access or security, uh, I worked at a job in the past where we all basically terminal servered into our machine to run it anyways, or all remote desktop into the server to do our deployments. So this would basically take one step out and would give you that layer of authentication. But for you and I, mostly people that are interested in game development primarily, I'm struggling to come up with an actual use here. But again, I do think it is extremely cool. Now, there's a couple other things to be aware of. If you want to go ahead, you can bring in your files. I find a few of these things do not work. I've bought with extensions. I have not found a single extension when I've searched. So for example, if I search for the Godot extension, I have never had this return result. So I think extensions just don't work in general. On top of that, your file system is kind of virtualized. So here, if I show you, oops, New is not going to do it. But if I go ahead and just save this file, you'll see I have this virtualized system on their end. So we could go ahead and do like an open, and I'll show you what I mean. We have this virtualized file system on their server that we're running in. And when I went into projects, I created a file there on a different machine and it persisted and here we are. So this is projects folder is where I am creating and using my project. Um, so obviously this would be the path that you you loaded it. If you created it yourself and you ran it, um, when you specify this directory right here, this will probably be the root of whatever I'm being provided here. But in the case of the server, I have no idea where this stuff exists and I haven't found a way to bring in um, disk details. So I haven't been able to link in like a Google Drive or a Dropbox or something to bring my own files in. You'll notice down here that I have a whole lot of resources to play with though. I've got 16 gigabytes of memory and 2.4 gigabytes of disk space available for my free account, which is very impressive. So I guess if you were getting into builds and um, you, their resources just kick the crap out of yours, you, you might be able to save on a compile. But frankly, to be honest, compile speeds have gotten so fast, I rarely look at optimizing in this particular area. But if you do want to bring your own files in, such as a uh, CPP file or whatever, I'll go back here too, because that's never going to do anything. Uh, you can just bring things in from your local file system, like so, just drag in the file you want, bring it over your browser, drop it here. You'll see it will upload the file and it is seamlessly there. Now, sometimes it takes a second to show up, and I have no idea what file I just dropped in. So hopefully I didn't just drop in the same file as before. Uh, no, there it is. And then there it is available. So bringing in your own files is quite simple, but I, I would love to see how you bring in uh, whole projects, whole directories and that kind of stuff. I'm not 100% certain in this particular case. So that is it. I actually never went to their homepage. So let's do that now. And it is coder.com, easy, easy enough to remember. This is their hosted version of Visual Studio on the server. But once again, if you're interested in doing it yourself, uh, they have it available on GitHub, MIT code licensed, um, and you can run your own version as long as you are using Linux or OS X. Uh, again, if you're Windows, you're probably stuck running on theirs until they release that other binary. Uh, again, I don't really see the use for this for a game development but again i found it cool enough i just shared it with you and i know some of you guys are just into general development oh, in general that sounded weird anyways so hopefully at least a couple of you guys found this interesting i sure did but i find everything interesting so i may not be a good judge of things so this is um 
Coder, a port of Visual Studio Code that runs in a browser. Let me know what your usage is and if you find this as interesting as I do. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.